Well, it's been, geez, I guess over a year since we started this whole YouTube extravaganza. And I've not only met some great fans, I've been reunited with uh, some old friends, too, on this thing, like uh, Britton from uh, Lindhurst, New Jersey, uh, Bill Karnschmidt, who we used to hang out at Schiller. God, I, I haven't seen Bill over, I'd say, oh, close to 20 years, and all of a sudden he popped up, and now we're back in touch. Um, but before I continue this whole thing, there is a passing to note, unfortunately, uh, two passings. Um, Fred Ward, one of the great character actors and star of Remo Williams and Tremors and Southern Comfort and Uncommon Valor, passed away yesterday at age 79. And he also was the voice of Django back in 1966 as he was living over in Europe and dubbed a couple other spaghetti westerns. Um, the other passing I missed was Ed Havoc um, Toscano, who was a professional wrestler. I met him with uh, Jersey All Pro, and he was teamed up with Papa Don as the solution. But after that, he teamed up with my buddy Steve Monster Mac as the heavy hitters. And unfortunately, you know, time slips away, and I just found out yesterday that he had passed away over a year ago. So there's two passings to note there, but, you know, when... Both of these guys um, were, were really good people. But back to the fan thing here. Um, yeah, got a lot of comments from a lot of different people that I'll, I'll read this off. Uh, Catherine Marcotan, uh, she loves my video. She's commented several times and has said that, you know, I heard that comment that some people say nobody wants to hear these stories. Well, I want to hear these stories. Well, I, I got news for people. A couple people said nobody wants to hear this shit anymore, but they're in the minority because if people didn't want to hear this stuff, why am I doing it? Another guy who posts a lot is Austria, Germany. That's his uh, name. Uh, Dan Ring, who uh, has been on Facebook and has met me at several conventions. Uh, John Walsh, uh, also I've met at several conventions. Uh, Nick C., who wrote Suburban Grindhouse. Derek DeRial, who has been a fan of mine for years, uh, down at Cherry Hill and stuff like that. Mondo Cinema, who watches. Uh, Joan Morgan, who PM'd me and thanked me for turning her on to uh, a lot of this stuff. Jeff Keith, of course, my old buddy Adam Trash from California, who actually moved out here. Not to be closer with me, but moved out here. Uh, Retro Roy, uh, David Beckham, Michael Agello, uh, all these guys, and you know, I want to personally thank a lot of these guys because, you know, I ran several charities through here, uh, most recently uh, raising some money for the displaced pets in Ukraine, uh, before that uh, some medical supplies and baby stuff for um, the refugees, and during the pandemic, uh, even though I gave myself four hernias doing it, I raised $3,000 through, you know, YouTube, Facebook, and other things, and basically supplied the food pantries with... Uh, 3,000 pounds of fresh chicken. So I paid for it with four hernias, but what the fuck, I did the right thing. And other things, you know, people send me stuff like, uh, this magazine is by a guy named Colton from Florida. It's called Dangerous Encounters. And if you look at it, it's sort of like his tribute to the old Gore Gazette. Matter of fact, it's sort of laid out like the old Gore Gazette. And this other one from Edwin Callahan, uh, unusual uh, magazine, Gravely Unusual, another great magazine that these guys have sent me. And, you know, I'll put it out there. Any, any of these fans, anybody who's doing a fanzine or something like that that, you know, wants me to write for them or wants me to throw something in, just give me a shout. More than happy to, you know, help you out there because when I did Grindhouse Purgatory, when it was rolling, I opened the doors to Grindhouse Purgatory like something Weird Video did for me years ago and gave people a chance to write. Unfortunately, there is no more Grindhouse Purgatory, but we're moving on with another magazine that will be debuting shortly, probably in June. And every once in a while, I get, I get a fan letter here. Um, this I, I just opened this before. Oh, wait a minute. Always nice to get a fan letter with a little green in it. Let's see what this is all about. Hmm. This is from a guy named Al Landis. It says, uh, hey Pete, hope you are doing well. I enclosed some money for those DVDs I like, you know, the ones from Thailand. I was feeling a bit creative, so I drew this picture of you with your dog. I hope you like it. It's hard for me to draw because my hands shake a bit now. I really should stop drinking, but I like it too much. I know you suggest that I get help, but why? 
I wish you hadn't changed your number because I really like talking to you. Well, when somebody calls you up at four in the afternoon and rambles on incoherently, I sort of have to change my number. No offense to anybody, but, you know, that's what happens. Um, are you going to be doing cons again? I really miss seeing you with them. I have all your DVDs that you signed for me. I bought two copies of every issue of your magazine. I'm sorry you stopped writing it. I know you said you had, you had, that you, your layout guy was giving you problems. I bought his magazine, and I'll tell you, it's not even close to being as good as yours was. Why does this guy think he matters? I saw him selling pictures of himself that says he's the world's greatest celebrity. I never even heard of him until I bought your magazine. Funny how self-important people become. But I guess every convention has to have a bunch of self-serving talent that they sell space to. Well, I hope you like my little tribute drawing of you. You have enriched my life with your work, and I'm hoping you do more. Looking forward to seeing you again. Your number one fan, Al. Let's see this drawing. Hmm, I can see what he means when his hands shake, and I don't know. It's close. Looks like he used age regression because, number one, I don't wear a tire suspenders, and uh, yeah, I guess poor Al must be having some problems. I hate to, you know, I'm not exposing anything here. I mean, you know, I've known this guy. He used to come to conventions a lot, and he always said that he didn't think he would live past 65, and um, he admitted he was an alcoholic, and he liked it. I, you know, I try to tell people, you know, don't let things get on top of you, but unfortunately, some people let things get on top of them, and that's the end result, and it's, it's sad, you know. I mean, I, I can't say I'm an angel. I drank, smoked, and did all kinds of other stuff. I just, you know, I put it this way. When you lose 18 inches of your colon, you just sort of stop drinking. So, you know, I stopped drinking. Didn't stop smoking, though, but stopped drinking. But, you know, other comments on, on this thing, you know, that, you know, during the pandemic that fans said that, you know, I enriched their lives a little bit and, you know, took their mind off a terrible situation that was going on. And, uh... It, it's really gratifying to me to get this because I, I don't ha I don't have the ego you know I just do this because it's fun and I like it and oops hey my dogs just came back in let me see if the, hey hey dogs just came get, boots come here does this look like you what do you think does this look like you uh, I guess poor old Al never saw my dogs I never bothered to see pictures of my dogs I don't know but hey uh, does that look like you look it, it look it looks more like a cocker spaniel you know I don't like cocker spaniels but hey whatever. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if, you know, I got, you know, and the other thing, too, was I remember um, I turned people on to movies, and obviously me turning them on to movies has them out there buying movies because everybody told me they jumped on the hunting party in Soldier Blue from uh, Kino Video, and I did do one on that, uh, The Love Butcher, uh, when I, I did that Stephen uh, Miller thing, had The Love Butcher, <laughs> whatever, but yeah, people were buying that, so... It's really cool that, you know, people respect my opinion and, you know, seek some of these really weird and obscure gems out. But, well, of course, we're not done doing all these weird and obscure gems, so there's going to be more to follow. So on that note, I will say thanks for subscribing, thanks for tuning in, thanks for telling your friends about it, because it's obvious that some people are doing that. And that's all we got for today, and uh, stay safe. Uh, of, of course, you know, I always say, used to say stay sick, but that flies by the wayside because everybody was getting sick with the pandemic. So stay safe and thanks again for tuning in and we'll catch you on the flip side. Oh yeah, and before I forget, um, Mr. Landis, Al Landis, Big Al as I call him, told me that I could use this artwork free on a t-shirt if I wanted. So what's going to happen is we're going to start a little... Um, 42nd Street Pete Teespring store with this image on it and I got a few other ideas we're going to put on it. Of course I will alert you as soon as the store is up and running but it's just something that um, this drawing sort of prompted that we can go in and maybe uh, make a couple bucks doing this. So again, hey thanks big guy, appreciate it.